We're here at uh, WNET's uh, celebration of uh, teaching and learning, the seventh annual. And with us, we have uh, Sal Khan from Khan Academy, and he's become a education rock star, as we just uh, realized when we had to herd him through the uh, the crowds here. And uh, did you ever have any desire to become a, a teacher? I had a desire to become a rock star. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, actually, no, I actually, you know, several iterations in my life, I, I was like, oh, teaching. Actually, I, I, I seriously wanted to become a professor at one point, actually, when I was graduating thinking that it would be really fun to teach college classes. Uh, but then, you know, you do a little bit of research into that to realize that becoming a successful professor is much more research, which is also interesting, but I, I was much more into the teaching side. And then, you know, I, and I kind of, it's kind of been this almost side narrative a little bit. I did a lot of, like, you know, in, in college, I did a lot of, I used to, the local school district, I didn't, they lost all their funding for gifted students. So myself and uh, actually now the president of Khan Academy used to go and be their gifted teachers for you know, one day a week to these, to these students. Um, so yeah, there's always been a little bit of that narrative, but I, I never, I mean, I definitely never thought it would happen like this. You mentioned uh, actually establishing a Khan Academy, a real school. You yeah. wanna tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, some, it's an idea we keep throwing out. It's, it's, the, the, the idea would be is if, if the, the whole school is, can be defined from scratch, uh, and, and you can kind of have some of these tools that the Khan Academy has, uh, you can rethink a lot. You can rethink, do you have to separate kids by age group? Do you have to separate subject matter? Do you have to have a bell, a bell ringing every 45 or 55 minutes? Uh, can you have more time for open-ended explorations, projects, whatever else? Um, it's, it's uh, and, and, and you know, for selfish purposes, I have a three-year-old and an eight-month-old, so I would like, I, I, I would love to kind of be, uh, have something like this for them, because I would love to see them when they're young, creating and exploring in, in ways that, and the current model doesn't necessarily allow for. Uh, but it's, it's kind of a, an idea that there's a couple of feelers out there. And it, it might happen sooner than later, depending on how these feelers go. It wouldn't be us running a school. Frankly, running a school is a lot harder than running the whole Khan Academy in terms of all the other. It would probably be a related school that we're t closely tied with, maybe even co-located with. Um, but, but one that's, that's there to really push the envelope of what's possible. Uh, maybe a charter school, perhaps. It could be charter. It could be. I don't know. I. I. I we've. We've talked. To, it could be charter. It could be private school. It could be. We don't know what it. What it might be. Believe it or not, there are critics of yeah. Khan Academy, and uh, and some of the criticisms are that, uh, you know, here we have a uh, an analyst from a hedge fund who has uh, now become uh, telling teachers how to teach. And so, any response to the critics? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's just as, uh, you know, no one should be painted with a broad brush, uh, you know. Uh, the, 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 and, and so, I, I think it's, it's you know, we, 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 and I say we, because we're a team now, uh, we'd like to be evaluated just on, on what we do and whether we're having impact with students and teachers. And, you know, and one thing that we, we, we do hold dear is that we are telling teachers what to do. We're actually... The way we view ourselves is we're, we view ourselves as a resource or a tool for teachers and everything that our team's trying to do is interfacing with teachers and having as close of a design loop as possible so that they can tell us what they need and, and students. Obviously students are probably they're the biggest part of this and, but interacting with them and understanding how can we make what we have being make it better and also understanding what we mean. What like you know, everything I shared today these are all things that frankly, teachers thought of and told us. They're like, this is how we're using it, this is how we're using it. And so kind of all we're doing is like, hey, that's kind of cool, that seems to make sense, and the data seems to back it up. Let's tell everyone else about it. So um, yeah, for us, it's we want to build, iterate, make it as useful as possible for everybody, and frankly, you know, we, we kind of view us as a, ourselves as a, as a resource for, for teachers. Uh, you're an MIT graduate. Uh, when you reflect on your time at MIT, um, what, what's your feeling about that, uh, your education there? You know, I, I think the most powerful thing about going to a place like MIT was kind of the community of people that you get to immerse yourself with. Uh, the other students, the professors, the grad students. 
And, and, and what's amazing about it is, you know, it's just, it's inspiring or being around. And, and it, it, it's somewhat sad, but I think it's true that MIT is probably one of the few campuses that is truly intellectual. That, that is, you know, you don't have to be afraid to admit that you're really enjoying the content and you really want to explore it. I know there are other universities that are like that too, but unfortunately it's not, I don't think, the mainstream culture on a lot of campuses where it's like exploration of true intellectual things. And, and that's what MIT is all about. If, if I had to critique it, um, and, and this is kind of a broad critique that could be made of, of, of higher education generally, is I think it was, frankly, too focused on the traditional lecture. Um, it did, and I was an engineering student, so obviously engineers do do a lot of projects. And they do a lot. I think they should, there should have been even more of that. I think uh, if, you know, and I've told folks at MIT this, I think the best engineering education would have been four years of building stuff, and then you have a scaffold of academic things as needed. Because uh, you know now when we interview engineers for the Khan Academy and we know other software firms, other engineering firms do the same, we you know we kind of look at GPA and degree as a first pass filter just to screen the resumes. But when someone comes in, we ask them, "What have you built?" And you know, how come no one's using it, or how come somebody you know, or whatever. And and I think and the unfortunate thing is right now the students, especially from some of these elite universities, they're so into the traditional book learning. That they, they've never built, or they've, they've never built anything of substance. They've built a few projects here and there, but never anything that's actually been in front of real people using it on a regular basis so, that, so they can learn from that. So I, I would love to see more of that happening. But I think what MIT really has, and this is actually the hard thing that's really tough, it's, it's, it would be almost impossible to recreate it from scratch, is that this culture of, of the people that they've been able to attract there. Uh, any, is there a Khan Academy app, or are any plans for a, an, just, an app? The Khan Academy iPad app just launched three days ago. And it's, 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 it's essentially a rich video viewing experience. The exercises aren't there yet. Uh, it's actually probably a richer video viewing experience than online. You can do it offline, and there's interactive transcripts and things. Uh, and yeah, it's been kind of crazy. It's the number two app, number one in education, number two in all of the whole iTunes. Um, in three days, it just kind of it's been a little bit surreal. And my last question. Any regrets in uh, creating Khan Academy as a nonprofit? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes when I drive in certain neighborhoods and I see, um, no, no, I actually, <laughs> I, I, I actually no, there's, it's, it's a, um, you know, and I, I get a lot of credit for, oh, man, how altruistic, he set up as a not-for-profit, he could have made billions, you know, all these other internet stuff, but I'm actually, maybe that's true, um, I actually, I actually am skeptical of whether we would have been as successful as a not as a for-profit. I think if we were for profit, we would have gotten pressured in the wrong ways to do things that weren't in the best interest of learners, and then we probably wouldn't have gotten the traction. I think we've, because we're not for profit and kind of the organic nature of it, we've been the beneficiary of a lot of good press. Um, so, so, and, and obviously that's helped us a lot. Um, so, you know, I, I don't even know if this would have even been successful as a, as a for profit. It might have been, but it wouldn't have been the same scale. And, you know, now everything, I mean, you saw the people outside, I mean, that's cool. I mean, it's, it's, you feel really good when, you know, a, a high school student walks up to you and says, yeah, we passed AP Bio, because I'm just like, wow, you know, I, did, I never met this kid, but I, I was able to somehow impact his life. Not just me, the whole team was able to somehow impact his life, and, there, and his classmate was there too, and she was saying the same thing. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty exciting. Well, thanks for sitting down with us, and enjoy the rest of the uh, celebration.